Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and here is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 75 and in today's episode I'm going to show you 24 new features in Google Apps so without further ado let's jump in. Let's start with YouTube Music and the first change is the new fourth tab at the bottom called Samples. This tab will give you a YouTube Shorts like interface which will allow you to explore new music by swiping up or down and on the right side you have some action buttons. The first one is like which will add this song to your likes playlist. Then you have the add button if you want to choose a different playlist from your library. Then you have shorts which will take you to this channel's page in the YouTube app. And when you go back you also have the ability to share the song from here or hit the play button if you want to listen to the full song in YouTube music player. Also, you have the ellipses here at the bottom, which will give you some extra options that we got used to in YouTube Music. And when you tap on the clip, it will play and pause using this giant play and pause button. If you want to access the album, you can tap on the thumbnail here on the bottom left corner, and it will take you to this page. But keep in mind when you do this, the app crashes and it will not allow you to go anywhere. You have to force quit the app and then open it again to overcome this bug. But other than this, it works fine. The second change is the addition of a new feature called Dynamic Queue. When you go to your profile menu and then settings, then playback, you will see a new toggle here called Dynamic Queue. And the description says, get queue and radio updates based on your listening behavior. So for example, when you play any of the automatically created playlists like the mixed for you section, and then hit the play button, if you kept skipping tracks, the app will understand that you don't like this type of music and it will automatically update the upcoming songs. So let me try to skip some tracks over here and I got a toast notification says we have updated your upcoming music. And that's how it works. Change number three is the support for Android 14 predictive back gesture. So for example, when I tap and hold on this song to get the overlay menu, you will notice here when I try to go back, it will do the same predictive back gesture animation before dismissing the card, but it only works in this scenario uh, because when I navigate between pages, I don't see the same behavior or even when I quit the app. The fourth change is the new thumbnail preview when you scrub through videos in the player. Change number five and the last one, when you go to your profile menu and then settings and then recommendations, you will see a new toggle here called remember most recently used playlist. If you have this toggle activated, every time you add a song to your library, it will automatically add this song to the most recently used playlist. But if you have it off, it will allow you to choose which playlist to add it to every time. Next, nearby share. And now when you try to share anything on Android 14, you will see that the available devices are now showing in the suggestions without the need to go to the nearby share page. And this will take us to Google Chrome that also got a revamped share sheet on Android 14 only. So when I try to share a link, you will get first a preview of this link with a glyph icon of the website on the left and a button to copy this link if you want. Plus you get the Chrome specific options after that, like the long screenshot, print, send to devices and the QR code and all other sharing options will come next. Change number two, when you open a blank page in Google Chrome and then tap on the address bar, you will see a new section here called trending searches, which is self-explanatory, but it only shows up if you have a blank page. But if there is a page already open and then tap on the address bar, it will give you another section called related to this page. Lastly, Chrome on desktop got a very neat feature. When you try to search for anything in Google search and then navigate to any of the web pages, you will see at the top right corner in the address bar, a new Google icon. When you click on this icon, it will open the search results in a sidebar so you can navigate between pages without the need to go back again to the search page, which will save you some time. Next, Google search. And the first change is the ability to modify your search query using filters. So for example, here I typed Android 14 and I have some suggestions. So when I tap on any of them, it will add it to the query and give me the ability to remove it using the X over here. And when I add multiple ones, it will do the same thing and they will be stacked on top of each other with the ability to remove them one by one. The second change is the ability to do a grammar check for your sentence. So for example, I'm gonna type the word grammar check and then give it something grammatically incorrect like how is you and then hit the search key. 
you'll notice here that there is a new section called the grammar check and it will show you the correct way to write this sentence with the ability to copy it if you want. Next, Google Messages. And the first change is the addition of two new options under the swipe actions. They are move to and snooze. The second change is the RCS chats will now be activated automatically without you doing anything. Previously, it used to show a pop-up at the bottom of the screen that you should interact with to activate the feature, which is no longer the case. Next, the clock app. And the full screen alarm notification got redesigned and now we have two buttons for the snooze and stop instead of having a slider like before, which will make it easier for you to stop the alarm, continue sleeping and be late for work, which is a great idea. Next, Google Contacts. And the only change I'm going to show you here is the redesigned contact page. You will first see circular buttons at the top. They have a fill color and this fill color matches your wallpaper colors. After that, it looks exactly the same, but I like the overall design of this new page. Next, Google Home. And now when you access your TV remote from the quick settings, it will appear as a floating card, which will allow you to control your TV and immediately revert back to where you left off instead of taking you to a totally different app. Next, Google Photos. And the only change I'm going to show you today is the more dynamic colors support. So for example, you will see here that the header has a different color from the background. But when I open Google Photos on my Pixel 7a, which didn't get this change, you will see here that the header has the same exact color as the app background. Also, when I go to sharing, you will notice here that the conversations section has a different background color, which is not the case on the 7a. Now let's talk about arts and culture and it got a complete material use support and you can see this everywhere in the filters, the menus and the navigation bar. Also, there are so much funny things you can do with this app now. First, you can use the camera to apply some filters and take photos. So for example, you can use something called art filter and it will show you some filters here at the bottom. Then it will put a filter on your face and then you can snap a shot like this and share it with others. Also, you can play some games and one of the funniest games I found here is called Plop Opera and here it will show you some plops that you can drag your fingers over to let them sing. Then it will put more of them and if you skipped the tutorial, it will give you the full band. You can also record whatever you are doing here by hitting the record button. Like that. And then when you stop, you can share the recording if you want. Here you have the globe button that will allow you to change the location. And then you have the ability to let them sing one of these songs. and so on. So it's so much fun to use. There is also another game called 3D Poetry, which will teach you how you can do a poetry yourself. You can do it in AR, so it will put the item on in your environment, or you can do it in 3D. You can choose a poetry here and it will show you how you can do it yourself. It will show you the first step. And when you finish this step, it will show you a progress bar here at the top. Once you finish the step, it will move to the next one until you finish making the poetry yourself. And then step number two is to put your finger in this area and make it narrower and so on and so forth. So it's so much fun to use. You can give it a try if you want. Next, the reading mode app now supports background playback. So for example, I'm gonna open an article in Chrome and then start the reading mode. Give it some time to start and then when I tap on the gear button and then go to audio, now I have a toggle called play in background, which means when I start playing the article and then swipe up to go home, it will play the article in the background and show me this bubble briefly that will allow me to stop the playback immediately if I want or I can also do the same thing from the quick settings. Now let me show you some changes related to the web apps and the first change is the new account switcher. You will see here that it supports Material U as well and it looks much better than before. In Google Drive, you will see three permanent filters at the top to help you locate your files. The first one will allow you to filter by the file type. The second one is for people 
and the third is for the modified date so that's pretty much it for today those are all the new changes i wanted to show you in google apps and if you spotted any new feature please reach me out on social media and i will include them in my future episodes but for now thanks much for watching and see you in the next video